All right, in this uh, lecture, we are going to be looking at exactly what is a database. So I want to get some co common terminology down and talk about what a, a database actually is. So technically, we can look at a database as a set of related data and how it is organized. So this is important that it is data that is related. So it's not just a bunch of bits and bytes and meaningless information. It's data that does have a common purpose. An example of this could be a spreadsheet just tracking data uh, that could be considered a database. Now, this is just a spreadsheet, very simple. A nice example could be a spreadsheet that you're using for time tracking. This would be a set of related data, example, an employee's hours for a week. The data, the set of related data could grow over time. The data could be for more than one employee. The data could serve as a record for what you need to pay that particular employee or a set of employees. So you could do a lot of robust things with a spreadsheet and collecting this data of time tracking. So let's take a look at an example. So if you take my courses, you'll know that I am a burn notice fan. So uh, let's say that uh, I'm down in Miami and I need Michael Wesson to do some work for me. I'm not sure what spring framework we would need Michael for, but uh, let's just say I had a, a job for him to do. And here is a, a spreadsheet. So it's got a number of important details here and it would allow Michael or myself to punch in his time and I could track Michael's time in it. Now, this is a pretty simple example. I'm sure a lot of you have seen time tracking systems before. So this is just a spreadsheet. So technically we are having a, a technically a database here. It's a very simple example, but this is an example of a database. But I want to take a look at some of the very important elements within this. So one of the things that database do, uh, like spreadsheets, is going to make some very important distinctions about the data elements. So an element being a piece of data, like a name, in this case I'll use Michael Weston again, um, the name Michael Weston, uh, both in a database and the spreadsheet, is going to consider a, a string. Now, I have the uh, U.S. format here of March 20th, 2018. That is a date. So uh, that would be a date object, and that's going to be different from a time object. So a uh, time of 8 a.m., that's going to be considered a time and not a date. So these are two distinct uh, data types. And then we can roll that up to total hours worked. And here, 46.00, that is a number. So a number has different properties than a string or a date. So like I can't add strings, but I can add up numbers. If you try adding a string, bad things are going to happen in the system or unpredictable results will occur. Now, uh, there's a lot more to data types. You'll see as I go through my lectures, I, I will progressively build upon things that you learn. So this is just a quick introduction. We are going to do a much more in-depth look at data types in an upcoming lecture. Now, database management systems. These are specialized computer programs for databases, and we'll also often abbreviate this as DBMS. These have four very important characteristics of what a database management system is. The first is data definition, so it's going to define the data being tracked. So all database management systems are going to have some type of ability to define the data that's being tracked within the system. And then, of course, the next thing that we're going to be looking at is data manipulation. And this is going to be operations where you can add data into the system, you can update existing data, or you can remove or delete data from the database system. And then, of course, there's data retrieval. So this is a very important characteristic. We want to be able to get the data out of the system and for some type of use. So a typical case would be reporting. So like the spreadsheet example, I'm going to have to look up that spreadsheet and pull data out of that spreadsheet to figure out how much I have to pay Michael. And then finally, unlike the spreadsheet, uh, this is an important distinction, administration. So the database management system is going to allow you to administer the system. So you're going to do things like define users on the system. You're going to uh, set up security. Certain users will be able to do one thing and they will not be able to do other things on the system. Monitoring, you want to be able to monitor the system performance. And then system administration is a very large topic. And this, you can get into some very large systems. And this is going to be uh, like monitoring the health of the system and maybe doing very low level tasks like 
determining where the data is being stored, uh, index operations saying it, you want to put something out, it's called an index that makes uh, data access faster. You might want to put a constraint in. So there's a, a lot on that. We will have a more, much more, actually it's going to be a whole section of the course on system administration. Now let's take a look at the different types of databases. Uh, there's a number of different types. Some are uh, very general purpose. Others are very, very specialized. So one example is a flat file database, and this is just a file. Like if you opened up like Notepad on Windows or a text editor of your choice, that is just a file with data in it. And there's programs out there that will use just a text file. You can go in there and open it up and, and see it. Um, actually, I remember a very, very long time ago, uh, back in the, the 90s, I knew a, worked with a major retailer, and they were using a, a flat file database. And... Um, at the time, it was a kind of a common to do back in the 90s. But the flat file databases, you really do not see those too much anymore. Now, next up is the relational database. The data is kept in database tables, which have relations to each other. And the relational databases are very, very popular. You'll see other databases like in news headlines, but this is really the uh, bread and butter. So of the industry. It's used all, all over the world. Even if you have like a, a phone, there's a special re relational database on the phone. Very common to use, especially on iOS. I'm pretty sure Android uses it under the covers as well, like for storing text messages and stuff. So relational databases are very popular. Some of the very popular ones are like Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, uh, SQL Server, so there's, there's literally dozens of this. So this is like probably the biggest section and probably most common out there. Uh, hierarchical databases, data is kept in a, a tree-like structure. And yet I actually don't see too many of those. It's pretty specialized stuff there. Not nearly as common as relational databases. And then we have a whole segment called NoSQL. Now these databases obviously do not use SQL, but they do have a variety of uh, data models. So it's kind of a segment of the industry, and these data models can include uh, key value stores, document-based or column-based. Now, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, we are looking at relational databases in this course, so I'm not going to dive into that, but I want, want to make you aware of that. And then finally, a different type of database is uh, distributed or cloud databases. And I almost hate to use the word cloud because it's such a nebulous term, but these are databases that are designed on to run on many servers, and in some cases, even multiple data centers. So you could lose a data center and your system still stays up. And these are for massively scalable systems. And they're also highly available. And frequently, they are no SQL databases, but there has been work to get SQL databases running up on them. And when I say massively scalable systems, I want you to be thinking uh, Facebook, Amazon, Google, these cloud scale companies. Think about Amazon, that I think last year did 40% of Black Friday sales. That's insane. But imagine the systems behind that. They're running multiple data centers just to handle that. So we are not going to be looking at those, but we are going to be definitely looking at uh, relational databases coming up in this course.